works. Was I did I not have sound earlier? Is anybody on? I have I'm not seeing anything in the comments. And I know if uh, on StreamYard, if you haven't signed up to be able to show your face and your your name and your photo on StreamYard, then it won't let you make comments on Facebook. So you do have to kind of follow those instructions and do that to be sure that we can see you. So if I've missed some of y'all, it looked like somehow I've done a lot of practice, but it looked like my microphone was muted on my phone for some reason. And I'll just see if I can change that. I'm not sure if the microphone on the computer is quite as good. So if any of you are on there and watching, I would love to know if this is, if you're getting, if you're getting good audio or not. I may just make a switcheroo. I'm going to go ahead and change the camera over to just my desktop so that I can look at that audio deal for a second. And hopefully we'll have some people join us. Hang on just a sec. Whoops, went to the wrong one. We don't need that one. Full force. Hang on, we're going to do that. And I'm going to let you look at those for a sec. I'm going to try. There we oh, go. Now that microphone. microphone. We're going to mute this one. And that should work better. <clears throat> Sorry, I just had a protein drink. And it just, I drank it too fast, I think. <laughs> so it's making my voice kind of do weird things. I'm going to get a sip of water before we get started. Okay, we have the Tea Boutique cards tonight. This is what I'm going to be featuring. It is from the Tea Boutique Suite in Stampin' Up's annual catalog. This is the one that just came out in May. And it's on page 12 and 13 of the catalog. And we will be using several of the items in this suite. And the main ones that we're featuring are the Memories and More cards that Memories and More Tea Boutique Cards and Envelopes is what this is. I guess maybe it's not Memories and More. It's just Tea Boutique Cards and Envelopes. But they are $10 for, let's look at page 137. We're going to see, I think you get five of each of the new end colors. Let's see, 20 card bases and 20 envelopes. So you have five different in colors, so you get four of each. And these are the colors in this suite are Crush Curry, Fresh Freesia, Garden Green, Orchid Oasis, Parakeet Party, Petal Pink, Starry Sky, Sweet Sorbet, Tahitian Tide. And they're all beautiful colors, and you can use any of those card stocks to coordinate with it to kind of come up with little accents that go well with your card. And we do have the cup of tea bundle which includes the stamp set the stamp set is called cup of tea and then the dies are the teacup dies and when you order both you will get the bundle price of 10 percent off so that number if you need to order this set after seeing how awesome this is the cup of tea bundle is 158667 that's the stampin up item number you'll need <clears throat> And then for the Tea Boutique cards and envelopes that are $10 for 20 cards, which is a heck of a deal, $159,270. $159,270. And I've shown you several of these cards, I believe, in the past, but this is something different. Kind of showing you how to either do them really, really simply or jazz them up a little bit if you want to. So. We're going to start with this one is really the simplest. I'm going to show you that first and then we'll kind of move on to some of the other options. Okay, we'll leave this one out and please comment when you come on. I would love to know who's watching and where you're from, even if you're watching the replay. I don't know why we've got kind of weird shadow tonight too. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know about that. 
Let's see if I can get that out of the way at least. Not really helping much. Okay. We'll see if that's better. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. I don't know how to get more clarity on here, which would be lovely. So I'll keep working on that for y'all. I'm going to get out my Stampin' Pierce mat that I have put grid paper on to protect it. <clears throat> but when you get it from Stampin' Up, it'll be just like this. And then I use a little piece of cardboard in here in between my paper and the mat because... I have a cushy surface in there. I probably don't need it in here with this harder table. It just depends on, on what your table is like. Okay, this one is from the Orchid Oasis Suite. You can see the coordinating envelopes that come with just the plain Jane solid. Well, it's not really solid. It's like a designer series paper note card. So you get the envelope and the note card that are already done without you having to do anything. And you'll just take it and use your bone folder to score that. Or it's already pre-scored. You just have to burnish it. And you can use the side. You can use the end. I've seen people do all kinds of things with that. But I flip it over and do the, the front and the back of that. We'll just move this envelope out of the way for the moment. And I'm going to take my little silicone mat for gluing. And we're going to go ahead and place our cute little Tea Boutique Designer Series paper. These come in six by six sheets and you get a pack of 48. I didn't show you that earlier and should have. And you can certainly see, you can see this is one of the Designer Series papers that looks just like the Tea Boutique card. So it all coordinates perfectly, which is what I love about Stampin' Up! Or one of the, one of the reasons I love Stampin' Up! And is just the color coordination. And I have already kind of dry fit this basically a little bit to see how that's going to lay out. And so I know kind of where I want to put things. We're going to use the best trio punch. I believe that's what it's called. Let's see. Very best trio punch. And that is Stampin' Up! number 159878. And I do have all the products here that I use tonight. So if you have any questions about any of them or how to use them or anything like that, let me know. I'm happy to help. And I'm going to show you tonight how to use this punch. It has three different, hopefully you can see that a little bit with the, the glare of the light. I'm not sure. But this is what makes the little scalloped edge on here. Right here. We're going to do that. And you just take your paper and you've got two little places. Let me see if I can get this held up. You can see there's two, let's see if I can get that. There you go. There's two slots. So you're up against both of them. And you want to do that when it's flat. And you can hold it there and look on the back and make sure it's in that corner. And it is. So we're going to punch. You have a tendency, or I did when I first got it, to punch on whichever corner you're trying to get that punch out of, but really you just, you punch in the center, no matter what. You get it lined up, punch it in the center, and then in order to get this exact same shape, you'll need to flip it over, flip over your paper. And then you line it up again. It's a little harder because you've got one long side and then the one side that you've cut is kind of short, so you don't have as much to hold on to. But you just punch that in the middle, and there you go. We could use either side. You could use the plaid or the dots with that. This is the Fresh Freesia color. And that's going to go here. And we're going to pop that up. I'm also going to put a... If, you, if I have some people on here, I'm going to get your... I don't see where anybody's made any comments. So y'all just let me know. I'll just keep going. And hopefully some of you will catch the replay. I was going to get your opinion, but we're just going to go with showing you this other one, the plaid, and show you how it looks. I'm centering this little punch. The punch has a little slot, or makes a little slot. You can see right here. Isn't that cute? So you've got the decorative edge and the slot, and then you've got just kind of a 
like a banner cut out. Let me see if I have a scratch piece of paper. Here's one right here. We'll show you what that does. It just cuts the cuts the side off, cuts the end of your paper. So it just depends on what size you have, what what you want done to your paper. But that's what it does. So I have not used that that end, but I've used the other two quite a bit. Okay, we're going to take our Orchid Oasis stamp pad. And we're going to stamp our little thank you on here. And then we will die cut it out real quickly. I just didn't want to die cut it first. And y'all miss, miss how easy that is to do if you have a die cut machine. If you don't, you could make a little rectangle. And that would be just fine and put your greeting on it if you didn't have a die, didn't have this teacup die set. And you could still use this paper just fine. No problem. But it really makes a cute set. So I do recommend if you're going to get the get the cards and envelopes to go ahead and get the bundle at the 10% off. And if you do the suite, you can just put in one number. It makes it easy for you to just put the whole suite in there. And you'll get the designer series paper and the little me memories and more cards, everything. You get just tons of goodies in the suite. Alrighty, I'm going to clean this off real quickly. And go ahead and die cut that with our little teacup die. And I'm going to use our stamp and cut and emboss machine. Show you how easy that is to use. This is our little mini machine. And I have found I'm using the number three instead of what the, the sandwich says to use. It says to use the number one for die cutting, but it has been a little thick on some things. So I have just decided I'll just use the I should have cut die cut that out first instead of last there. Lesson learned. I was trying to think of what would be good better for y'all on the air. <clears throat> See if I can move that over. Kind of doing it doing it backwards. Oops, it's shaking the table. Sorry about that. And I'll let that, it's not very well centered on there, but I think we can make it work. We just want y'all to get the idea of how to do this. I can, let me grab, I just can't put it on there if it's that off center. I'm going to get another little kit and cut that real quick again. Let's see if I can find a little scrap piece of white. I bet you I can. I seem to have a lot of that. Okay, we're just going to poke that out. We're going to do this again. Put that on. Whoops, leave that on. That's probably loud on the microphone. Sorry about that. I'm going to cut this out first and then stamp it. That way we know we get it centered. This will be just as easy for y'all to see. And if anybody's too... Sorry about that noise again. <laughs> Not much I can do about that. Okay. So 
So we'll just stamp this little guy. And we have five different end colors every year. So those just started with the new catalog in May. And this suite is the only one that has all of all five end colors in it. So that's kind of a fun thing. That's the reason I bought it because I wanted to play with all the new end colors. And this is a great way to do that. Okay, trying to get this where y'all can see it. Just tap, tap, tap on your ink pad. You Certainly with a new one, it's really gonna be juicy so you don't have to press hard at all. And then you just go straight down, leave it for a second or two, straight up. And there you have it. That's our Orchid Oasis color. And it goes really well with the Fresh Freesia. That's what this, this color is. So both of the teapots, when I'm working with Designer Series paper, I try to pull out the colors that are in that particular piece, that particular Designer Series paper itself and not just something in the in the bunch if that makes sense i am going to use some of the little fresh freezer ribbon we're just going to cut off a little bit of that to put in our little slot and this is the fresh freezer let's see what it is open weave ribbon if y'all are looking for this, this comes in several different colors that are in the annual catalog. Fresh Freesia is 155615. And whenever I put a ribbon through a slot, I usually fold, put the folded in through. And I'm going to do this one with the plaid side up instead of the dotted side up. Since I have no comments to tell me they don't recommend that. <laughs> so if you're watching the replay sorry you didn't get your chance to say leave the dots i like the dots i'm a dots girl <laughs> which i am i like the polka dots but i think that this using the plaid gives you an idea of the variety you can do and of course if you're doing a whole set of these you'll have two you'll have four of each color so i would recommend doing all four Whenever you pick a color and what you're going to do with it, then I would go ahead and do all four cards. And it's a lot faster that way. In fact, I would probably stamp all of, all of them if you're going to use the same design, which would make it faster to do something similar. If you're going to put them in a little gift basket or gift bag or gift box, however you're going to present your gift of note cards which this makes a great Christmas gift, birthday gift, anything like that. Everybody always appreciates handmade cards. So I think that's a wonderful gift because it shows how much you care about them, that you took the time to make all of them for, for them to send. And then the recipients will realize that those are handmade. And so they're even more meaningful to them. So it's just a win, win, win all the way around. Okay, I'm kind of centering that. I want it overlapping this a little. I want it to overlap the teapot piece. We'll move that out of the way. And then we're just going to put the cup on. If you want to give it a little more shape, you can take your bone folder. Let's see. Mine's in the big pile here. Doing five cards was not the easiest choice, <laughs> but it's what I wanted to do. So we're trying it. Okay, we're going to curve that a little bit so it has more, a little more depth to it. And then I'm going to put two, I'm going to stack the dimensionals on top of each other. I'm going to do two dimensionals and you do have to take the back off. Then stack another set of two dimensionals, just like that. There we go. And that way I'm not putting anything on the edges because it's not going anywhere. This is going to anchor it to your card. So these will look like they are more 
convex, I guess. Not concave, convex, yeah. So it will have a lot more depth to it and look more like a cup because you've got, and you could put it on kind of cutesy like this, kind of crooked. You can keep it straight. I normally, my tendency would be to do it like this, but since the, the teapots are straight, I would probably do it straight. So we're just going to do that. And it's anchored there, but see, it looks like it has a little, it's kind of rounded like a cup would be. If you can see that. Okay, easy peasy. So you could do this same style with all the colors if you wanted to and make it quick and easy. And then on the inside, if you wanted to stamp something, you can. If you bought the designer series paper and it had extra paper, you can put a strip of it in there. What I did here was just stamp the a cup and the little tea leaves, I guess is what those are, what they represent. We'll just do that real quickly and show you how easy that is to fill out the inside of your card since you have a decorated envelope already. Might as well make the inside of the card cute too. Just tap, tap, tap. And you can do the cup first or the greenery first. It, I don't think it really matters. Just give it a little, give it a couple of seconds. Give it some even pressure. Straight down, straight up. There you go. Then we're going to go ahead and put, stamp another cup. And you can stamp the one that has... It's different from the one on, well, you could do either one. Let's do the stripe just so you have, you can see the options. We're just going to close the green up. This is the Parakeet Party, another one of the new in colors this year. And the in colors stay in for two years. So every year you've got five going out and five coming in. So I know some of the demonstrators call them like junior and senior colors. So <laughs> these would be the junior colors and the senior colors would be the in colors that came in last year. All right. We're just going to see if I can do this without getting my head in the camera. Stamp straight down. Use a little pressure. Come straight up. There you have it. Isn't that cute? And then you could just put whatever note you want on the inside. Cute, cute. All right, that's the Orchid Oasis and Fresh Freesia one that goes with this envelope. So you could decide if you had that. This is actually the in color pack of paper, designer series paper. That's a separate pack that comes in six by six. And it has several different designs. And I have chosen the dots or the plaid. So I think they're both cute. Which one is your favorite? Do y'all like the, y'all let me know in the comments if you would, which one you like the best, if you like the plaid or if you like the dots, plaid or dots. Let me know which one you like the best and we will move on and I'll show you a little bit different twist on it with a little bit different colorway. All right, we're gonna move right along. I think we're going to move to, we'll just move to the red one. This is one of the new in colors also, Sweet Sorbet. And it also has some crushed curry in that pack. This is all from the designer series paper, the front and the back. This is a, a different piece of paper in that pack, but they all coordinate well, you can tell. All right, we're going to cl close this one. Fold that on the score. Give it a good burnish. There we go. And this one, we're just going to glue down. And I'm doing the opposite of what I did while ago. So the other one was had the designer series paper with the pattern on the right. And this one we're going to do on the left. Y'all can just figure out what what you like the best with that particular design. And as I said, I would play with it first and, and figure out how much room you need, what kind of where you want it to be. And we're going to go ahead and use that punch again, just in, oh, yeah, 
we're going to do that. And then I'm going to do this. And you can decide if you want it to go all the way across. I think I'm going to make it go all the way. And I'm not using my ribbon scissors. I save one pair just for that. Well, I think what I did was center that. I think I will stick with that. And I'm just going to cut it on the yellow instead of having a little bit of white showing on one end. I'm just going to go ahead and cut so that that looks even. So you've got the yellow stripe on each end, if that makes sense. Instead of leaving that little tag of white on there to make it go, go all the way to the edge. All right. We're just going to put this down kind of toward the bottom. Line that up. I don't have my grid paper on tonight. I I used to have a, or I've, in the past, I've had a different background here for this. So y'all let me know what you think. I was hoping this would make it a little more clear. I was thinking that maybe the grids were making it a little more pixelated. So y'all let me know. Okay, take your paper, flip it over. Line it up, get it all the way in, punch again. There you go. Flip it over around, and you can do your little slot to put your ribbon in. There we go. And if it's a little bit off, not in the center like mine, it doesn't really matter because you're going to put a ribbon through there that pretty much takes care of that anyway. You can't really see exactly where it is. We're going to tie a little bit. This is the Parakeet Party. All of the metallic woven ribbon comes in five different colors that coordinate with the end colors. They are not exactly end colors, but they're close. And I am going to, you can either run it through here if you want to. You can kind of run it through and then tie a bit of a knot or tie a partial knot and then tie your bow. So I've just got kind of a half, half knot, I guess you'd call that. I think of a half Windsor when I think of a half knot, which I don't know that I ever tied a tie and needed to learn how to tie a Windsor knot, but I know there is such a thing. <laughs> Kind of wasted some ribbon there, I think. But we're on the air, so we're in a hurry. We don't want to keep y'all all night. All right, and then this ribbon frays nicely. It's going to fray a little bit anyway, so I just take advantage of that and spread that out a little bit on both ends. So it looks totally intentional as it is. Kind of gives it a little bit different texture altogether. Okay, there's that. And I have been with my ribbons. I actually cut a little slice in there in into the cardboard that the ribbons on, and kind of stick that in there. That's helped kind of corral the all of that ribbon from going all over the place. Now we're going to do the same thing with the dimensionals. So all we've done on this one that's a little bit different is added this. And then I was going to show you if you wanted to put a little bit of color on the cup, you can. I'm not totally sold on, on it, so I'm probably not going to do it tonight. But I did a little bit of shading with, this is a Smoky Slate Stampin', Up, Stampin Blend that I use to kind of give it some depth, but, and then I use the color lifter to make it a little bit lighter, kind of smear it a little bit where it, it didn't, it kind of blended a little bit. Cause normally you have two blends. You have a Stampin' Blend that's light and a Stampin' Blend that's dark. But if you're already starting with the lightest, it's kind of hard to, to make it <laughs> shaded. So uh, I haven't really quite learned totally the trick on that yet. So. We may or might not even try that tonight. We've got this, probably about like that would be good. 
If anybody's on, let me know. I know I uh, messed everybody up. I know I'm doing a different time tonight, but I do have a training at 7.30 and didn't want to miss it. So I thought, well, I'll just try to do both. We'll see what happens. Okay, I'm going to cut another one of these off camera so that it doesn't shake the table like it did before. And I'll be right back on camera. In this teacup, we're going to stamp in the sweet sorbet color because that's what our base is. And we're going to use the same thank you. I'm going to use the sweet sorbet. And I think maybe I had a, well, I definitely had more trouble on the cup. If you decide you do want to do some of the shading like this, definitely do it before you put it on the card. Because mine was already on the card. Hmm. Not a good plan. But it was just kind of an afterthought. I had, I usually do some shading on the cups, but I haven't left them white very often and I haven't haven't been doing kind of beginner top cards as often so that's why I did that okay let's see what we did on the inside we did a red striped cup we're going to go ahead and do that while we've got the ink right here we'll do the inside and these cards are not representative of Stampin' Up's full quality basic white paper they are not as good because they are such a value for you to buy. I don't want you to think that that's the best Stampin' Up! paper there is because it's not. Our cardstock definitely is better and stamps better. But in order for these to be a reasonable, reasonable price for you to purchase and certainly to give as gifts, if you're going to give as a set and a gift, you want it to be reasonably priced. And as long as you're not doing a whole ton of detailed stamping, it works just great. So I think, I think it's still good quality. It's just not our usual excellent quality that our other card stocks are, if that makes sense. All righty. And we'll go ahead and put some of the little, what do we have on the front? Yeah, we have the little leaves. We'll just go ahead and do the leaves again in our little cup even though it doesn't make sense to have leaves coming out of a cup i still think it's cute and you get it you can see through the photopolymer stamps are awesome because you can see through them and you can tell how to line that up when you've got a two-part two-part stamp like that okay got that so that one's done. We're going to just stick with the little curve that you do with the bone folder to kind of curl that a bit. And we're going to double stack our dimensionals again. That does make it a little thick to mail, but usually if you've got a bow with a knot, it, it may be too thick anyway. Our, our post office people here are pretty, seem to be kind of strict about that. So I usually put the extra postage on the stamps, which is the non-machinable surcharge is what it's called. So you just buy a little bit extra, extra postage than you normally would whatever that stamp is. I don't, if it's around 80 cents, I think. So it's not double the price of the stamps, but it is, it is more, but then you know that your person's not, whoever you send it to is not going to get it postage due. So to me, it's a handmade card. If, if it's worth your extra time to make it and send it to them, I think it's worth a little extra postage if you need to, to get it there. In my humble opinion. Okay, so you can see what I meant with the blender pen where it's got a little shading. And then this one doesn't. But the shading's not perfect. 
So it's easier to do it this way and it still gets the message across that that is a teacup. <laughs> so, and that you are grateful to your recipient for whatever they've done for you. That bow's a little ornery, but you get the idea. Okay, there's that one. Easy peasy. And here's how cute it looks with the envelope. Isn't that wonderful how they coordinate? So you've got a pretty front and a pretty flap. So who wouldn't be excited to get that in the mail? Hello, Rebecca. I'm glad you've tuned in. Hi, Jennifer. Thanks, Jennifer. And you do like the shading. Okay. Well, that's that's just with the blender pen. So I thought I'd work with it a little bit more. I wasn't totally happy with it, but I think, it, like I said, it was because it was on my card already. Okay, so there's those. We're ready for our next one. We're going to kind of whip through this. I'm going to show you, if you didn't have a die cut machine, you could just use the rectangle. Now this is really cute. This is one of our other dies that has the stitching on it. And it's, it's a tag die. So this one is a little stepped up. Like I said, you could do all of them like those with just the punch. And that's what we're going to do tonight. And I'm just showing you these options that are, that are up a little bit, up their game a little bit. But this is a darling little stitched tag dies. Let me see if I could find that. I didn't bring them in here tonight. They are in the annual catalog. Let's see where they are. Tailor made tags, 155563. So there are four different sizes and two different top, top treatments. This one is the straight edge one. And then this one has a little more curve to it. But both of them have four different sizes and they have the little, I don't know what you call them, that go around the hole. <laughs> Like a little, almost like a little donut hole, or then they have the little flat one for this. So we're just going to show you how it looks. If you were to just get the punch and use it for your paper instead of doing the dies, you certainly could. And put your greeting just on a rectangle if you didn't have the whole set. And then we'll do, we're gonna, I don't know that I want a slot that big. I think I'll just show you how we'll just put a, since we're using the twine, we don't really need a huge slot, but we'll just go ahead and use it. That'll, that's the easiest way is just go ahead and do this one like we did the others. And I seem to be doing everything a little bit to the left. All righty. Here we go, bone folder, burnish that fold. This is the Tahitian Tide. That's the third one of the end colors. <clears throat> Just gonna glue this on and you could use your favorite liquid glue. You could use stamp and seal, whatever your favorite glue is. I would just use that. Then we're going to do this tag. We're going to go ahead and stamp. This is a little different than we've done on the other. So we're going to go ahead and stamp the thank you on there. And I'm doing that in the garden green, which coordinates with the paper, the designer series paper. You get the thank you. Kelly, 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 what have you done with it right here? Okay, we're going to use garden green on this one. And I'm just stamping it since this one is the solid. We're going to stamp thank you up toward the top. I'm going to leave a little more room so that we have it for the ribbon to hang down a little bit more. And then we're going to stamp that little bitty leaf 
So y'all can tell it doesn't take much to step up the card a little, just a little bit. Just going to stamp a little right there. Just to kind of jazz it up. So you can kind of see, you could do that on any of the cards or all the cards. It just depends on how much time you want to spend and how much equipment you have. <laughs> okay. So we'll, we're going to stamp this one first for sure with the stripe and this is as i said the tahitian tide is the in color for this card we'll see where that color is right here had them all in a stack and then make a mess okay there we go we're going to Stamp the striped cup. Just tap, tap, tap. You don't want to get it too heavy. I always tap it and then look at it and make sure it looks like I'm covered good. This one has a few spots, so it's a little bit different ink. We'll see how it doesn't look like it's going to be a solid coverage. So we're going to stamp it off first over here. See how it does. So it does fine. Okay. We're going to tap, tap, tap again. And then do it a little more to the left because it has to have room for that handle when we die cut that out. There we go. We'll die cut that in a sec. And I'll go ahead and do the inside. So if you bought this set of note cards and you wanted to give somebody the whole set, you could. Or you could break it into two sets. And two people would get ten cards each out of that one set and whatever extra supplies you have. Okay, we'll do our little parakeet party greenery coming out of there. There you go, cute, cute, cute. Hey, Rebecca, <laughs> I, stamping is easy. It can be really easy. It certainly can. We Sometimes we make it hard just because we like the challenge, some of us. But it can be really easy and a lot of fun. I'm glad you're back in town, Rebecca. Hope you had a great trip. It looked like it from your Facebook photos you posted. That's awesome. I'm so glad to have a wonderful community of paper crafters, stampers. That's one reason that several people uh, who are on my Stampin' Up! team kind of joined the team because of the, pa the uh, paper crafting community we have. Everybody gets along and everybody, the veterans help the newbies and it's just awesome. I should have gotten some little tape, frog tape or something to hold that down. I forgot to bring that in here with me. We shall hope for the best here. And we're going to have a wiggly camera again. And a squeaky. Squeaky, squeaky. <laughs> From the mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. All right. See, we've got that. Easy, easy. So once you have that stamp set, the or the cup of tea bundle, you can do a ton with it. So you can imagine if this was red stripes and then you could fill that in with green and you could have a Christmas cup or you could put the greenery in it and then just have your red striped. I mean, there are just tons of possibilities with this set. I'm just showing you some of the simpler versions tonight. And you can go ahead and do the little tea bag. I, I, I guess I'll go ahead and do that for you. I wasn't going to, but I guess we will. We want to show you kind of the little bitty ways to step it up. And that is one of the ways to do it. You already have the die. So you just need to do the little stamp. And I have both of them. One, one on one side, one on the other. Here, I'm going to peel that off. That's what's wonderful about the photo, photopolymer. 
you can see through them and they're easy to pull on, pull off, put back in the stamp case. And they don't take up a lot of room. All right. See how easy that was? Just stamped the little tea bag. How cute is that? Oh my goodness. I almost didn't even show you that. I was afraid it would take too long, but it's just too cute not to show you. Now we'll show you the cute little bag, tea bag die, and you get two of them. So you can cut two out at one time. If you go ahead and stamp two, if you're doing multiple cards, you can stamp two of them. And I'm worried about the tape there. We're going to just do this over here off camera. You can talk amongst yourselves. I'm just going to go ahead and cut this out. Oh my gosh, how cute is that? Love it. Love it, love it. All right, and you've got two different sizes of the tea bags, but that's an easy way to do that. I'm going to put this back where it belongs before I lose it since it's so small. But see, you could add limes or lemons for your tea. There are so many things you can do with this set. Add little hearts. It comes with hearts and the limes, and it's just a lot of fun. Okay. Without the stitching, this may be a little a little uh, plain for me. So I may take the little marker. I'm just going to take my Stampin' Right marker. You could use your Stampin' Blends because the end colors do come in blends and markers. You can buy the whole set of just the five on the markers if you want them in each individual blend combo the light and the dark of each color you buy separately. So you buy, I mean, you buy the combos together, but you don't have a way to buy the whole in color pack at once like you do with the markers. So I think that's gonna add a little bit of interest there since we didn't do the die on this one. And we're going to grab some of the little Tahitian Tide all of the in colors come with in a mixed pack of Tahitian of uh, <laughs> Baker's twine. Also, I'm going to get a little. Let's get about that much. And you can I usually just double it there. I'm making a double bow just because twine is is smaller. So if you want it to make an impact, sometimes using a double double length of it really makes it stand out a lot more. I didn't do a very good job with how much I needed there. So I'm kind of kind of overdid just a tad, but that's okay. We're on air. You have to decide <laughs> once you do one card, you'll know how much you need for the next one. We're just going to, since I didn't run it through that, I'm just going to use a glue dot and stick that right on top of there. We'll use our take a pick tool. Well, actually I'm going to go, usually if you have an embellishment or a ribbon or anything that's a separate piece, even if it's a die cut, if you can at all, if it's possible to take the, the die cut or the ribbon to the glue dot, that's the easiest way to do it. And then just kind of twist it off and it will come off on your bow or your leaf or whatever you die cut. And you can just put that on right there. Okay, now we're gonna, whoops, I didn't really intend for that to get glued yet kind of glued all the way through. We're going to glue all four corners of this since we're going to, I'm not really doing the middle. Normally I probably would, but since we're putting the teacup kind of in that middle area, I'm not double stacking that. Just 
going to put that like that. And we'll have our cute little teacup, wherever that is. That's not it. Did y'all see what I did with the teacup after I die cut it? There it is. And then we're going to take a teeny tiny, and I mean, when I say teeny tiny, I mean teeny tiny piece of Baker's twine. See that? It probably probably three quarters of an inch or something, and that's probably too much. We're going to curve the cup like we did before with our bum folder. Then we're going to take and use a little of our Stampin' Now I'm going to use a glue dot. Okay, I'm going to, let's see, we're going to put it on that side. I'm going to put the glue dot right there. You can see I'm just pulling that glue dot up, leaving it back there. That's what I'm going to do. We'll stick the twine to the glue dot. I'm going to stick another glue dot onto the tea bag. And then we're going to put that little twine like it's hanging from the cup. Isn't that a cute idea? Just make your own little tea bag like it's sitting in the water in your teacup. How cute. Oh my goodness. And you could make it where it's loose if you want or, or just where it shows like that. How cute. All right. Now we're going to stick that on with the double stack. And y'all can see how easy it is to change them up just a little bit. Or you can leave them all exactly the same if you want to whiz through them a little better and not do the extra little steps. But just with the pack of the designer series paper that's in that suite. And then I used the, one of the cards used the in color designer series paper also. So I kind of wanted that little leaf to come out of the cup and that just, I just think that's plenty cute. What do y'all think? Jennifer, I hope your training is going well. Jennifer got a new, new job recently and is going through training that just started. We're going to trim that just a tad. <gasps> Whoops. Careful when you do that. You want to pull your pull your ends. I'm glad I hadn't glued that all the way. Pull that up a little more. Now I'm going to tighten it. Tighten it up. Got caught on my scissors there. Got in a rush. Okay, so there's that one with the little cute little thank you. Two different ways. That's basically the same card. Just this tag is a little bit longer because it was cut like this for my kit. And I appreciate y'all tuning in. And when you share my videos, you have a, a um, chance to win one of these little card kits too. How about that? All right. Now we have, let's see what time it is. Ooh, it's almost seven already. Okay, what we're going to do on this one, I've got an, another option already done, and this is the, our Starry Sky in color. And we're just going to do we're going to, instead of using that, we're just going to take this Get our little burnishing done. We'll move this out of your way so y'all aren't looking at all the mess here. I'm just going to glue this down. And this is from the T Boutique Designer Series Paper Pack. Going on the note card. We're going to do that. And then I've already stamped one in the starry sky. I've already stamped a cut 
stamped a cup and die cut it out. And then I have already die cut the tag. This is the other tag. I showed you earlier the one that was straight and this one is a little more curved on top. So that's the difference in the two dies that I wanted to show you. With the tailor tailor made tags, I believe is what it was. And you can pull the backs off of your dimensionals with your fingernails or do it with your take your pick tool, whatever you want. Whatever is easier for you. But I love this sweet sorbet mixed with this starry sky. That could be a great 4th of July kind of colors or card. Wouldn't that be cute for a thank you for a barbecue for 4th of July? Now you've got two different ways. You can see how different it looks just with the little bit, two different tags. This one has texture on it to kind of show you that option. If you were doing these cards, you could texture all of them that we're solid like that. You can do them like this where that you just have the stitching and you stamp on it. If you'd rather stamp on the cup, you do it this way. How fun is that? Starry sky. That's that one. And we've got two different ribbons. This is the metallic ribbon in the starry sky color. And you can tell it's not exactly the color of starry sky, but it blends really well with this, this paper, especially I thought. So you've got your cute little envelope to coordinate. How fun. Wouldn't that be great to get a whole set of these? To get 10 of these cards, you could get two of each color and feel like you had really gotten a special gift that somebody handmade for you. And one set of the cards is 20. 20 cards and 20 envelopes. I keep telling y'all, it's a deal. It's kind of like signing up for Stampin' Up. That is a deal. If you're looking at placing a large order with Stampin' Up, you certainly all want to consider how to get the best value. And I'm always one to help you maximize your value. And if you are kind of thinking about joining Stampin' Up and being a part of our Create with Kelly crew, we would be very welcoming and would love to have you. You don't have to be a demonstrator. You can just do it for the discount. You can sign up, get the discount, and then you still get all of the things that we do with just our team members. And we get to go, we get to order out of the catalog. We, we get to see it a month before customers do. So that's a lot of fun because we're all about FOMO, right? Fear of missing out. We don't want to miss anything. <laughs> so we don't want something to already be sold out before we get to even order it. And if you're a demonstrator, that, that doesn't happen very often. So I know customers are disappointed sometimes when, when that happens, when they, when something is sold out because it's been so popular so fast that that happens. Woo, I've got flowers going everywhere. I've already die cut those for us. I'll go ahead and die cut one more of the cups. And if y'all ever have any questions about joining Stampin' Up or being on my team, I would love to have you. We've got Tanya Cook, who is another one of our, our team members. She is very helpful with new, timber, new team members and would love to have you on her team and too, to be under me. That It would still be on in my Create with Kelly crew. And... I was talking about the deal a while ago, and the deal is on Stampin' Up. Besides the value that you get from the paper crafting community that you would be a part of, and getting to order early and a lot of other wonderful perks, and getting a 20% discount, and then you can build up from there. But you, your kit is only $99, and... You get to order, you get to choose whatever you want to order for $125 to put in your kit. I would not recommend curving your um, cup before you stamp it. <laughs> I was talking and didn't think about that. But we're going to tap, 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 look at it, make sure it's covered well. And... See how this works on a cup that's already curved. We'll probably have to recurve it. Yep, stamp just fine. Okay. Get that cleaned off. And we'll stamp 
a let's stamp the leaves let me see if that's big enough yes for the leaves we're going to do those in parakeet party those the dark was garden green that we use that is a coordinating color as we discussed and there is a dye that cuts out the green leaves so we're going to do that on this one to give you a little bit different something different to to try to, and stepping up your card have another little die on here i'll show you that and since our table wiggles so much i'm just going to show you the die and how that fits on there see it just makes the outline we're just going to cut that real quickly And I don't have any washi tape or anything in here. Like I said, oh, I have washi tape, but I don't have my frog tape that I usually use. You need to use, if you're going to use a tape to hold it in place, it needs to be not extremely sticky. Just needs to be sticky enough to hold those two pieces together, but not to peel the paper off. Okay, so here we go with the parakeet party which we've used, this is the green color we've been using all along. And I usually try to line those edges up and then do my burnishing. As I said, it's already pre-scored. The cardstock's already like that and scored. This is done with the stitched greenery die, I believe. You can see the texture in that. That is another die for the those of you who are advanced stampers or hooked on Stampin' Up! like I am, where you have to have all the latest, greatest. This is so cool. See, that's the back. So it pokes through, but doesn't poke it out. It just makes that perforated leaf. Isn't that pretty? And I think it goes beautifully with this designer series paper. So we're going to get this on. And like I said, you can use your favorite liquid glue or stamp and seal and kind of look at this and see which way you want it to go i kind of think it seems to go this way more it's not totally directional but kind of kind of seems like this is straight up okay then we're gonna dimensional this little piece that adds a lot of interest because of all the texture Go ahead and put that on there. Kind of want it. Oops, I caught that just in time. I have one of these little pieces I want to put on there for contrast. It picks up. This has some petal pink in there and it has some of the fresh freesia. So I'm going to do this. Let's see if we like the plaid. No, I think the plaid is just too much. I like the polka dot. We're going with polka dot. Thanks for sharing, Jennifer. Which one of these card kits would you like? What color do you want? And I'll save you one. Just for sharing. You're awesome. Thank you for that. I'm trying to build my online business, and that helps a ton. Because you never know what kind of crafty friends might be on your feed and be interested in coming to classes or just ordering online, either one. We do have a monthly paper pumpkin craft kit that comes in the mail that doesn't really have anything to do with pumpkins, but it <laughs> that just happens to be the name of it. And I'm just going to glue, glue this on the back there, kind of tuck it in and glue it on the back. And I think before I glue that down. I'm going to try a little bit of the blend. And just do the top here. We're going to use a little scrap paper. I'm just going to use that. Being brave here. And I'm just kind of going along the top and then making a little curve to that so it makes a little bit gives it a little bit more interest and in shading 
just on the edges and the bottom. Maybe where there's a curve there. We'll just do a little of that. Do a little tiny bit here along the edge. And this is much easier when it's not attached to the card, like I was saying. <laughs> this works a lot better. And this is the light, smoky slate that I'm using. Make that a little bit darker right in the back. So that you've got some kind of differentiation. Well, probably shouldn't be because now your leaves are behind the cup. <laughs> There we go. That looks more realistic. A little more. That kind of works. Then I'm going to use, just to show you, kind of how I did that other one, if I can buy my lid. This is how we lose things. Sitting in one spot. Did y'all see what I did with the lid? <laughs> oh my goodness, Kelly. I don't see it. Well, hopefully I'll find it in a minute. We're going to use the color lifter right now and see if we can kind of smooth that out just a little bit. Since we don't have a lighter color, like I said, than the smoky slate in the gray, that is the light. The color lifter kind of pulls that. You know how porcelain cups are kind of kind of like that. Okay, I found it. Hoorah. Okay. There we go. And then if you wanted to go in and do a little bit more detail, you could take the garden green marker and just kind of go in every once in a while you could either do the do the stems or do a little bit this marker is kind of dry I don't use this color a whole lot so this is just the thin the thin tip which is just about dry yep I've kind of worn this one out but you could use a Stampin' Blend. I just can't reach those at the moment. But that gives it a little variety in the leaves if you do a little bit of that. So we've got two-tone green. There we go. All right, now we're going to curve it like we've done our others. Y'all will be pros at it by the time you do 20 of these, right? <laughs> All right. We are going to double stack. In fact, I'm going to do three of these because we have that extra piece there. And you do, I have learned from experience, you have to take the back off of the first set before you attach the second one. Otherwise, they don't attach. <laughs> yes, Jennifer. The gremlins are taking stuff again. All right, we're gonna do this and then we'll add our flowers. Thanks for the reminder there, Jennifer, about adding the flowers. All right, I'm gonna put, oops, sticky, sticky, sticky. Okay. We're going to, and I like everything to kind of overlap a little bit for the, it's all the focal point. So you want your eye to kind of stay in that area and kind of move around. So I don't want one thing off by itself and something else over here. I kind of want it all that this, having some white space helps something breathe. All right, so we're going to take the dark Stampin' Blend and you always want to make sure you've got scratch paper if you're using blends because they're alcohol markers and they will definitely bleed through. 
So we're going to make a little center to the flowers. Woo! I think that's the dark. Indeed it is. Okay, and I die cut these. These are in that same, same little set. Tea Boutique Bundle. And... There we go. And I'm just going to take these and use a little glue dot. And you take the die cut, like I was saying earlier, to the glue dot. And kind of twist it as it comes off. And you can put the little flowers wherever you want. And you can use the little bitty ones. You can use the different sizes. They're kind of all a little a little different they're not perfect so it, it's just can be anywhere you want it we'll put i think we're gonna stick with three big ones and then we'll use some of these little bitty ones a couple of these i try to do things in odd numbers it seems that that's the standard for the way your eye wants to move around the page is it does better with odd odd numbers to keep it keep it on the page a while which you've made the effort to make the card you want it to be you want them to enjoy it there we go there's our last card can you believe we did five and well it's a little over an hour but <laughs> hour and 15 minutes that's pretty fast for me and there's our cute little coordinating envelope fun 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 and of course you wouldn't have to have the blends to go in the middle there you could if you have the marker or the blends either one you could do that i'll bring these out again and let me Oops, I did not go downstairs and get our little information that I was going to share with y'all. Hopefully I can just remember it. I'm going to put these out while we talk about that. We have tomorrow, well it actually starts at midnight tonight, we will have a 15% off stamp sale. And it's almost all the stamps in the catalog are going to be on for 15% off. I, I do have a PDF. I think it's on my blog. But if not, you can just email me at createwithkelly.com and I will send you the PDF with the prices, which one, what, what the totals are on the stamp sets that are on sale. And like I said, it's most of them in the catalog. So that's quite exciting. We'll just stack these. I think we can get them like this. If we get all this other mess out of the way where y'all don't have to look at that. Let me get a little sip of water. So like I said, that stamp sale starts at midnight tonight and goes through like 11.59, almost midnight tomorrow night. And let's see, did I miss anything? Let's go ahead and do this. I'm so glad you tuned in. You can tell my, my pile here I just made. It was clean earlier. <laughs> All that mess has been made just during the, this live. <laughs> So I just want to say I appreciate you all very much for tuning in, whether it's live or on the replay. I'd love to have your comments even after the live. If you're on the replay, I'd love to hear that you watched. And if you have any questions about the Tea Boutique cards, note card set, you could put this in a cute little craft box or it, you, there are just a lot of different ways you could use this as a gift. You could just tie, tie up a bunch, five of them or 10 of them or 20 of them with a ribbon and present it to someone it'd be cute even just five of them one of each color would be cute as a hostess gift if somebody invites you over for dinner you could take them five thank you cards and they would just think that's awesome it would make up for the fact that you only brought potato chips and dip and they made a whole meal <laughs> ask me how i know <laughs> oh my goodness well 
again, thank you for tuning in and remember the sale that starts tomorrow. We also have weekly deals that are going on through the week, through the month of September. So every week the deals change and I forgot to go down and get that information. So there is information about that on my blog. You can go to and click in or just go to createwithkelly.com slash shop should take you there. However you want to, it'll show under promotions and it'll let you know what, what items are on for deals. So that is a great way to do it. And if you're, like I said, if you're about to place an order, if it's going to be $150 or even over a hundred, you definitely want to consider just getting a starter kit. So you get $125 worth of stuff for 99 and then you get to meet all of our team members and do some fun things and decide if you want to stay in as a hobby demonstrator or if you would like to turn it into a business. Either way, I'm happy to have you on my team and I'm happy to have you as a customer. Whether you're local and are coming to classes, I do have a cup. I have some slots open in my beginner classes tomorrow. I have a two o'clock and a six o'clock scheduled for beginners, and then on Monday night, I have an intermediate class. And then the next Sunday, the last Sunday of the month, I have an advanced techniques class. And if any of y'all are watching her, my regulars, if y'all have ideas on what you'd like to see for techniques, I'm still open for that because I'm working on the other classes first. So <laughs> y'all let me know. Thanks again for tuning in. I appreciate you liking and commenting and sharing. It really helps me build my channel. So thanks again for tuning in. Great. We've got a lot of fun times ahead. Thanks again. Bye-bye.